Such is oft the course of deeds that move the wheels of the world. Small hands do them because they must, while the eyes of the great are elsewhere. May go vanen, my friends. I hope you all are having a grand day wherever you are in Middle-earth. Yoisten here, bringing you an epic character history that I've wanted to make for quite some time now. Today, we will discuss the great half-elven loremaster named Elrond. Let's begin. Elrond, meaning Stardone, was the name of one of the sons of Arendil and Elwing. Elrond, along with his twin brother Elros, was born in the refuge of the Havens of Sirion in Beleriand, in the last century of the First Age. Shortly after their births, the Havens were attacked by Maethros and Meglor, two of the sons of Feanor, as Elwing possessed one of the Silmarils that Feanor's line was bound to. After the sons of Feanor attacked the Havens and captured Elrond and Elros, they came for Elwing, who jumped into the sea to be saved by Olmo, the Vala of the Seas. Later, Elwing would take the shape of a white bird, and she would bring the Silmaril to Arendil. The mother and father of Elrond and Elros would go on to take the Silmaril to Valinor to plea with some of its inhabitants for aid. In the meantime, however, Maethros and Meglor were unsure of what to do with the two young half-elves that they had captured. Out of pity and eventually out of love, Meglor raised Elrond and Elros as if they were his own sons, and both sons of Feanor befriended the two twins. It is possible that years later, Elrond and Elros would go on to fight in the War of Wrath against Morgoth's forces, but there doesn't seem to be any specific writings to prove this. Anyway, eventually Meglor and Maethros, who were the last surviving sons of Feanor, would meet their fates after they stole the two Selmarils from Aonwe after the War of Wrath. Maethros met his end in a fiery chasm, and Meglor cast his Selmaril into the sea, and still supposedly wanders the shores, singing laments of his regrets and despair. By this time, however, Elrond and Elros had departed from the Sons of Feanor, as they were no longer children. At the end of the First Age, the two half-elves were given a choice by the Valar to embody either the race of men or the Eldar, but not both. They, and all other half-elves to come, were given this choice as both Elrond and Elros were the descendants of Tur and Idril on their father's side of the family, and Baron and Luthien on their mother's side. Elros chose to be among the kindred of men, and he set sail from the western lands of Middle-earth, where Beleriand used to be before the War of Wrath. He followed the star of his father Erendil to the newly erected island of Numenor, where he would be known as Elros Tar Minutur, the first king of Numenor. Elrond, on the other hand, chose to be an elf, and he remained in Linden with Gilgalad, the new High King of the Noldor. During the early years of the Second Age, Elrond became a great healer, loremaster, and the herald of Gilgalad. Linden remained peaceful until the coming of Anatar, the Lord of Gifts. Anatar posed as an emissary of the Valar, and he came seeking entrance to Linden. But Gilgalad and Elrond sensed that he was not as fair as he seemed, and they denied him entry. The same being would then go to Arigian and teach Celebrimbor the art of ringcraft. One of the elven rings, Vilya, would go to Gilgalad. Eventually, the War of the Elves and Sauron began after Anatar revealed himself to be the new Dark Lord. By the command of Gilgalad in 1695 of the Second Age, Elrond led the elves of Linden to defend Arigian, but the elves were unable to save Celebrimbor, and they were forced to flee northeast. They eventually came to a hidden valley, and Elrond established Imladris, or Rivendell as it would be known in the common speech, in 1697 of the Second Age. Even as it was besieged and grew in refugees, Imladris remained as one of the only strongholds left against Sauron, and it would continue to endure even to the end of the Third Age. Eventually, the combined forces of Numenor and Linden freed Rivendell and defeated Sauron in 1701 of the Second Age. After the Dark Lord's first defeat, Elrond held the first White Council in Imladris. Likely, Elrond, Galadriel, Gilgalad, and Círdan were some of the Eldar in attendance, though the members are not explicitly stated. The Council decided that the three Elven Rings should remain hidden, and Imladris would take Arigian's place as the Elven stronghold of Eriador. Except for Linden, of course. It is possible that Gilgalad would give Elrond the Ring Vilya at this time, or sometime later, before his demise at the end of the age. Elrond would bear Vilya even after sailing into the west at the end of the Third Age. It was during this time that Elrond met Celebrian, the daughter of Galadriel and Celeborn, 
who he would one day wed. Years later, in 3429 of the Second Age, Sauron once again revealed himself to the Free Peoples, and two years later, the War of the Last Alliance would begin. Elendil and Gilgalad's forces would march to Imladris to join with Elrond and his elves. The forces consolidated their military strength for three years in Imladris, before setting out over the Misty Mountains to join with the elves of Lothlorien, Mirkwood, and the dwarves of khazad The War of the Last Alliance took place, and it eventually ended when Isildur cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand after years of siege and battle. During the war, Elrond served as Gilgalad's herald, and he witnessed his High King's death and the fall of Elendil by the hands of Sauron. After the ring was taken by Isildur, Elrond and Círdan urged Isildur to destroy it. As we know, Isildur did not do this. As Elrond was now one of the last lords among the elves, he returned to Imladris to continue leading his people, and thus the Third Age began. As there are many years in the Third Age, most of the events concerning Elrond are scattered about, so I will have to jump from year to year. In 109 of the Third Age, Elrond wedded Celebrian. In 130, the twins Eladan and Elrohir were born, and Arwen Undumio came 111 years later. For over a thousand years, Rivendell remained peaceful. I imagine that Elrond met both the wizards sometime after their arrival in Middle-earth, in 1000 of the Third Age, and Glorfindel, who arrived around the same time. Peace in Imladris remained until Angmar attacked during 1409 of the Third Age, in the time of Angmar's war with Arnor. With the help of the Galathrium from Lothlorien, Elrond's forces defended Rivendell, and they would rebuke the Witch King's forces in 1975 of the Third Age, when Glorfindel would lead a host of elves to defend Fornost against Angmar with Elrond as his herald. After the Kingdom of Arnor, and specifically Arthedain, fell, and presumably after this battle, Elrond took the Ring of Barahir and the Scepter of Anuminas for safekeeping in Rivendell, until a descendant of his brother Elros might restore Arnor. He would also serve to protect and house the heirs of Isildur from time to time, as he cared greatly for the lineage. In 2463 of the Third Age, after Gandalf infiltrated Dol Guldur for the first time and unknowingly ousted Sauron, Elrond, along with the rest of the wise, such as Gandalf, Galadriel, Círdan, and some other lords of the Eldar, formed the White Council with Saruman as the head. They would serve to keep watch for the darkness during the time of the Watchful Peace. A little less than 50 years later, Elrond's sorrows were added to as his wife Celebrian was captured by orcs of the Misty Mountains. Eventually, Elrohir and Eladon rescued her, but Elrond was unable to heal her, so she left for the Undying Lands in 2510. After Gandalf invaded Dol Guldur again many years later, he discovered that the necromancer was indeed Sauron, but Saruman dissuaded the council from acting in 2851, as the wizard had already begun to shift his loyalty and he wanted to find the One Ring himself. In 2933, Elrond adopted Aragorn as his foster son in Rivendell, after his father Arathorn had been slain by orcs, foreseeing the danger that would come with Aragorn's identity. Elrond named Aragorn Estel, meaning hope in Sindarin, and he hid his true lineage until Aragorn came of age. Elrond also sent Arwen to live in Lothlorien with her grandmother for some years at that time. During the events of The Hobbit in 2941, Elrond would be crucial in aiding Thorne's company, as he identified Gandalf and Thorne's weapons and read the moon letters from Thor's map. His advice would allow for Thorin, his kin, and Bilbo to find the hidden door on the face of one of Erebor's walls, and this was necessary for the dwarves to enter the mountain. Later that same year, the White Council would assail Dol Guldur to rid it of the Necromancer. These events were discussed by Bilbo, Gandalf, and Elrond in Rivendell during the Hobbit's return journey home from Erebor. In 2953, the White Council met for one last time, as Gandalf thought that Bilbo's ring could be Sauron's One Ring. Saruman dismissed this, claiming that the ring had been swept off into the sea by the Anduin River. Some years later, Aragorn and Arwen met and fell in love, and Elrond said that they could only marry if Aragorn reunited the kingdoms of Gondor and Arnor as the High King. Now we arrive to the events of the Lord of the Rings, which I shall quickly summarize as Elrond's actions in this time are fairly well known. As Bilbo and Elrond were good friends, Bilbo retired to Rivendell in 3001 of the Third Age, leaving the One Ring to Frodo. Seventeen years later, Frodo set off on his quest, heading towards Rivendell to seek Elrond's advice about the Ring. 
as Gandalf also suggests to do in a letter that the wizard left at Bree. Eventually, Frodo was injured on Weathertop, and one of Elrond's scouts, who happened to be Glorfindel and was looking for the Hobbit, found him, and hastened him to Imladris. After Frodo crossed the Fort of Brunin outside of Rivendell, Elrond and Gandalf used their combined strength to send large horse-like waves down the river that washed the Nazgul away. Afterwards, Elrond was able to mostly heal Frodo's Morgul wound, and they held a feast for the Hobbit before the Council of Elrond commenced. Elrond narrated the history of what he knew about the One Ring and Isildur's lineage, and he confirmed Aragorn as the heir of Isildur to the rest of the Council. We know too that Aragorn is the heir of his brother Elros. Elrond affirmed Frodo's decision to carry the ring, and the half-elf also chose some of his companions, accepting Merry and Pippin only reluctantly. Sometime later, after the Fellowship of the Ring set off, Elrond sent his sons Eladan and Elrohir with the Dúnedain rangers to aid Aragorn, and to remind him to take the Paths of the Dead. Elrohir advised Aragorn to do this, and he also presented Elrond's wisdom during the last debate, affirming Aragorn's decision to divert Sauron's attention so that Frodo could destroy the One Ring. Even though Elrond did not directly involve himself in these events, and stayed in Rivendell during the War of the Ring, the quest was won with the help of his advice, and Aragorn became the High King of the reunited kingdom of Gondor and Arnor. And so Elrond stayed true to his word and he escorted Arwen from Rivendell so that she could wed King Elisar. He parted from her in great sorrow, and with the company of Gandalf, Frodo, and many others, Elrond went back to Rivendell, and he stayed there for a few more years. Finally, in 3021 of the Third Age, Elrond and some of the other Ringbearers rode to the Grey Havens, and from there, Elrond returned to the home that he never knew. With his friends of many years, Elrond took the White Ship into the West, leaving his daughter and sons behind in Middle-earth. And in this way, he finally reunited with his wife. His journey was complete. Elrond is one of the only characters mentioned in all three of Tolkien's most famous stories of the Silmarillion, The Hobbit, and The Lord of the Rings. From Elrond, we may learn that sometimes the more thoughtful and methodical actions are wisest, and we should never turn aside those who are in need. Thank you all so much for watching, I really hope you guys liked it. This is a character with a broad amount of history, and I thank you all for making it through the video. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and share this with a friend. Let me know your thoughts about Elrond in the comments below, and don't forget to join us on Facebook and Twitter to contact me more directly. Also, make sure to subscribe to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today. And I will see you all next week with a region spotlight on the land of Rohan. Thank you all for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my friends.